everybody, Uber Lady Charlotte here again, and I'm still waiting at the airport. All right, I was down to like nine minutes with the maximum being 13 minutes, but I got a phone call and it knocked me out of queue. So I had to start all the way over. Yeah, it sucks. I'm mad about it, but it'll be okay. So anyway, cut the radio down here. Anyway, I'm sitting back out here at the airport again, and um, you know, I'm off today on my real job, so I ain't got nothing else to do. Sitting out here wasting time, hanging out. I need to start making some damn money is what I need, because I got something to pay next week. Okay, really, 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 I don't. I just, I do, I do. I need to start paying on my cruise. But anyway. Anyway, so, all right. So, I was think, sitting here thinking about a time when I used to be a licensed hairstylist. And my friend girl, Tiffany, she said, uh, Kim, it's a new barbershop opened up downtown, kind of like downtown Charlotte by the overpass. I said, for real? I said, so why are you telling me that? She said, because we need to go down there. I said, why we need to go down there? She's like, there's this fine-ass barber that just got a job in there. I said, well, I can't go down there because I'm married. And what am I going to look at the fine-ass barber for? That's when I was married. She said, well, just go with me. I said, Tiffany, I really don't think I should be down there because I'm pretty sure I'm wrong for looking and lusting at him if he find that fine, like you say. She said, well, don't look at him. I'm going to look at him, and you just go with me, ride shotgun. So I'm like, okay, all right, I will. All right, so I get out there. She, we both get out there. Next thing you know, you know, we go in the barbershop. It's all men. We both a little intimidated, but she on, she on a mission, and I'm riding shotgun. So we get in there, we sit down, and the guy say, one of the barbers say, uh, you, you, what you ladies need, eyebrow arch? And so Tiffany kind of gooched me on the side. And I'm like, oh shit, now she done got me in this. So I'm like, no, nah, we, um, I'm looking to get, a, um, get my Anita Baker tightened up, because I had the Anita Baker haircut in there. Get my Anita Baker tightened up a little on the sides, a little down on the sides a little bit. And uh, he said, okay. He said, uh, all right, we'll let you know when the chair come ready. So me and her was sitting there laughing and talking and joking, staring at this guy, because this guy was some kind of fine. He was fine. I was looking. I was lusting. I was wrong. And I got dealt with. All right, so then another dude came open. He was like, all right, you ready? I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on old boy right there. So the dude looked at me. He's like, okay. All right, I'll get you in a minute. But we sat over there looking at him lusting hard. I'm talking lusting hard. All kind of things. Cause see, I was a lot younger then. All kind of things we were going to do that was unrealistic. We really can't do. So anyway, finally it was my turn to get in the seat. Sorry, I think I'm fighting a bug. Y'all know I don't play them bugs. Okay, I'm back. Anyway, so I get in the seat. Well, he talking to me and I'm listening to his voice. And at some point in time, I fell asleep in the in the chair. You never fall asleep when a hairstylist is doing your hair, and you never fall asleep when a hairstylist is cutting your hair. I mean, a barber's cutting your hair. All right, so I fell asleep. Next thing you know, he was tapping me on my shoulder, telling me, all right, you ready, shorty? I opened my eyes, and he turned me to that mirror. I had a damn butt-naked fade. A butt-naked fade. When I say butt-naked, it was butt-naked like my arm. Bucket-naked. As we say here in the country, bucket naked. Oh, I was devastated. I had hair on the top. I looked like a damn woody woodpecker. Didn't have shit on the sides. Bucket. You see my cheek right here? Move his baby's ass right there. On the sides, right here, right here. And then it wasn't even blended. It was just a straight line. Like somebody put a damn bowl on my head and gave me the fucking bowl cut. It was horrible. My friend girl face was like, oh my God. Now we riding home. I'm mad. I'm crying. All my hair cut off on the side. I look like a dang on dude. Like I should be wearing a lumberjack shirt or something. I'm like, oh gosh, my husband gonna kill me. I knew I shouldn't have came down here. But I deserved it. I was just crying. I deserved it. I was down here listening after that man and I married. Oh, I deserve this. Oh, I deserve this. And he, oh gosh, he's just gonna hate it. He's gonna hate it. And I cussed her out. Oh, I was just upset. So finally it's time for me to go home that, later on that evening. Oh, now let me go back to the shop. Oh, they picked at me at the shop. What the hell you got a butt naked fade for? Who did that to you? Yeah, really, who did this to me, Tiffany? So, I have to go home. Now, I'm telling you something about my, my, well, I've been married twice. My first ex-husband. He used to always get a butt naked fade. And I used to always take my hand, these four fingers, and I used to spit on my hand and slap the shit out of his head. 
just to hear it say back and it used to hurt I'm sure it did well I know it hurt now because he caught me off guard he spit on his hand and I swore that man about spit my damn head around on my shoulders I feel like the damn exorcist it stung so bad so and I never did that to him again and he was like I like your haircut we sitting there looking like damn bopsy twins but Nikki fade one and bucket Nikki two Oh, I was so embarrassed. It took forever for my hair to grow back out. But I learned a valuable lesson. Stop following your friend girls and stop doing what they tell you to do and keep your ass out the men's barbershop.